All right, guys, Drag Boss Tim Halstead. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go through the oiling system on this block here, which I call the Drag Boss 351 Cleveland. But on a stock Cleveland block, you can see the oil pump bolts here, and the oil sucked up from the sump or the pan, and then comes out this area here. You can see how I kind of rounded this out at one time. And then it's <clears throat> coming back down and pushed, you'll see inside, through the filter before it goes to the rest of the engine. Now in this case, look at this. So it's the same thing, you can tell, you get one of these blocks, you're gonna do some massaging, I can tell you that's for sure, especially when you look through and see what I saw through the oil galleys. But here's this coming through here. I found a wire tie seems to work good so you can see the pathway here until I get the scope out. So the oil's coming down through here. You can see that hole right there. Now that oil's gonna come back here to the 585, which is this right here. And we're gonna look in there and see the scope and we're gonna follow up from there. So the oil's coming through here into the filter, back through here into the main galley right here. And I call it 585 because it was 585 thousandths on the factory Ford. Now here's what you'll see here. It's upside down, but I think you're gonna get the picture. But you can see here, there's a, a galley here, here, and here. So two of them are lifter bores. This one here and this one here. You can see there, you can see the lifter bores right there. And that's what feeds that. Let's go inside. So now we're going to look down into the 585. Like I said, the oiling system is pretty much the same, except for there's a crossover in the back. And this block here feeds the mains first before the right-sided lifter galley. Now, when you come in here, that's coming from where the oil filter is coming in. That's where it discharges into here. And you can see all these little sharp edges. I'd think about doing a burring in there and cleaning everything up because it's definitely going to need it. Now, as you proceed back through, what we're going to see, and you can see it moving there, you're coming across the block now. The first thing that you're going to hit is going to be the cam feed. Now, the oil is going to go into this first main journal right here. And that feeds the cam. You can't see it yet, but that's what's feeding the cam right there. Now the other hole right here in the back, that's the large hole in the first main that's like 5 sixteenths. You really don't need that on this block either. And you can see it there. But see how sharp all the edges are? And you'll see some that are even worse. I don't know if you're going to get in there and clean them up, but where there's a will, there's a way, and I think you could. And then now if you see that red tie, I'm telling you, these zip ties work great for that. That's where it's going to feed up towards the mains. That's going to be the lower galley on the front of the block. And you can see it coming down through there. So it's going to feed that area there. And then what we're going to do, now we're going to go to the, that main galley. And when I say the main galley, this is what I'm talking about right here. That isn't there on the Cleveland block. That block has this, which is the top. I'll give you a better view, right? And then the one way in the back where the distributor comes through. This block has this one, which you just saw, and also that one back there where the distributor comes through. But it also has this one. That's the priority aspect. So now when we go through here, you're gonna see where it's gonna shoot off the mains first. We know already that it went through the first main, you saw that. And that will feed the cam and the first cam bearing also. Now we're coming up to the second one right there. So that's feeding the main right there. And then what feeds the cam is the another oil hole. Just like on the stock block. Now I'll tell you, let me move this. When I went to go to three, I had a hard time, and that's the center main. And you'll see right there. Right there. I actually had to pop out, and you'll see some debris in there. I had to pop that out because it wasn't all the way drilled through good. There, look at There's another piece of stuff. See it coming out of there? So these blocks need some TLC. I think every... 
galley needs to be cleaned out and without doubt, but needs to be ground out or smoothed out. Because look at that. So that's where the thrust bearing would be right there. I couldn't do this before. It's still hard. It's like there's some, it's like not drilled all the way. So we'll see. Now, like I said, it'll feed that main bearing and then it'll go back around and feed the cam from the same journal. There's the next one, that's four right there. We'll get through that stuff. And there's the fifth main bearing right there. And that's some of the stuff that I had pushed out before. Look at that. Now when it goes and feeds that main, it goes around and feeds the cam bearing. They all feed the same, just like on the stock Cleveland. And if you keep going in the back, I'm going to push that right out on the floor. Good, we can look at it. I'll pull it back. There. You see that? Now one of them is the main, which is coming from here. I'll show you the tip of it, and you get an idea of what we're talking about. So there's where it's going. It's, now it's, it's coming and feeding the main. Now the oil keeps going, right, and goes up this way. And that's where it's going to cross over in the top of the block to feed the other side, the left side lifter bore. You'll see how all that works. So you get that picture. We'll come back out. A little surface rust in there. Now here's the right side lifter bore here. We'll just kind of go through it. It's not much that you're going to see out of it other than a galley with some where the lifters come through. And one of these, I had a hard time getting through. It wasn't straight. It might even be that side. Yeah, right there. I had to actually, like, there it is. I had to move the lens, bend it a little bit, because it's not exactly straight. But that's, you can see, each one of these coming off, that's where the lifter bore comes through. And there it is. And that's going to feed up. to the top of the block in the back. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I get there. Now here's by the cam, we'll look at this. This is the cam one, right? This is the left lifter bore set. It's the same as the right. You're not really gonna get much out of it. You can see it, I can go down there and get an idea what it looks like. But every one of these blocks needs to be mas massaged, cleaned up. I'm not going to waste time trying to feed it there. I've already, oh, there it is. You just got to kind of wiggle it around and get it to go up the right channel. Now we're coming on this side, right? This is the left side of the lifter galley, and you can see there where it goes up to the top, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's cool, though, to see that kind of stuff. So there's the back of the block. You see it right there. If you look down there, right that, that right there, that is the one that's coming from the main galley. So this has got two ports in it. You see them right there. The one on this side right here, that feeds this. And that does the same thing. That goes down, you can see where it goes down, and that feeds the left side lifter bore. And you can see, you need to grind that out of there. You can't have that big thing restrict and flow like that. It's not even drilled perfect. So that all, you need to go through all these with a bore scope. Tony, you should get one of these bore scopes. I've used it tons of times. And then you can see where that is right there. And it comes off, and I'll show you here. Here's the ones in the back. The lower one feeds the mains. Top one, right side lifter bore. Here, same thing. This is by the distributor. Look right here. We'll go inside that. I'm going through that little hole right there. Now I'm in the top of the block on the left side hole, the smaller one, and that's where it crosses over. 
So the oil from the right side crosses over at the top of the block, comes down this port here, and that's what feeds the left side oil galley. And that's how it works. Now I'll just show you on this side here, that's what we were looking at there, that side there. We'll go down here and you can see it coming out through here. So this is the lifter bore right there. You can see where the oil is coming out or will come out right through there. Now as you proceed further down, here's the lower one and that feeds the mains. Be nice to get in there, and you probably can get in there and smooth all those radiuses out, make it as best as possible. These things need to be really deburred and cleaned up. But that kind of gives you the whole. But that gives you the whole picture right there. And if you kept going, that goes to the cam bearing. So I put a longer wire ties to give you a better idea of how this gets fed. Now we'll go down and look at the rear main. And get an idea. There it is right there. So that's the rear main right there getting fed. And that's how they work. So the oil from the main galley is feeding right there. And then that other one, which I don't have the other wire tie, but I can push this one through. So that's the main. And there's the cam bearing. I'm going right through the rear cam bearing. So you see how close they are. And that's how they are on the Cleveland too. That gets fed to the main and then feeds the cam. All right, guys, I'm just going to do a quick synopsis. You've seen this chart before. I made this chart when I did a reel and a short on the oil system. I think it's really important for guys to understand this, uh, why a Cleveland has issues with the oiling. So this is a stock system. The oil comes up, and I showed you this on the, the block and also in the video. But the oil comes up this big passage here, and I call it the 585. And that's the one that comes in the side of the block. Comes over here, goes up, feeds the main here and the cam here. It keeps going. Another one comes in and feeds the main again and goes all the way up and feeds the right side of the lifter bore. That bank first, that lifter bore galley. That's why we can plug off the big 5 16 hole down here. We don't need all this oil going to the main. It needs one source and that's it. Comes in here, it can oil the main and go to the can. This can be plugged off because it's continuing to go this way to the right side. In the priority oiling system, just pretend that these aren't, this isn't the lifter bores in here. If, it, if this is feeding up here, it feeds that first or the lower plug galley and it does the same thing. Comes down here, feeds the main, goes up to the cam, does it all the way across to here. As it comes down here, on that system on the aftermarket block, it comes down here and it goes up, feeds the cam. But it keeps going. Now when it comes up here, I showed you that picture, here's a picture now. It crosses over, comes back down, and I showed you that the takeoff of that goes towards the front of the block and feeds the left side lifter galley and all the lifters on that side. It's important to think about that, um, especially like this plug that we don't need. Now we get into the question and I'm not going to, I'm just going to bring it up. Now the question is, do you really need lifter bore bushings? Does that solve the Cleveland oil problem? Everyone's going to say, yes, it does and blah, blah, blah. My question is, how come I don't need them? Am I racing this block? Not this one, the one over there, 12 years. And I don't need no lifter bore bushings. All I have is restrictors in the mains and restrictor cam bearings. That's it. Now I know my system's proven. I took that engine to the dyno and dynoed it 21 times, ran 21 runs on that thing. Then I took the oil and sent it to Lake Speed Jr. He did an analysis on it, no wear metals. So you don't have to have lifter bore bushings. Just keep that in mind.
the real question arises are, are your lifter bores worn? Do you not have an adequate oil supply to it? You gotta have a nine quart pan. I was always told that, I always run there and never had any issues with it. The other thing is, you gotta take your time and make sure all the returns are lined up because they don't line up on a stock Cleveland at the top where the head's bolt on. There's an eighth of an inch that needs to be ground away on both of them to allow them to drain. That may be a component people say, oh, all the oil sits up in the, underneath the valve covers. Well, it does if it's not gonna drain down. That's common sense. Go through and look at that next time you have your engine out or you're doing an engine. Also, all the areas around where the oil's coming up from the sump through the filter, all that stuff needs to be deburred, man. Clean that up, deburr that. I've taken long burrs and gone into the 585 and cleaned all that stuff up. Everywhere I've cleaned up. I make sure everything I can has got a nice, smooth, rounded passage. People don't go through that kind of stuff. Maybe you do. I don't know. But that's it in a nutshell. So thanks. Stay tuned to Drag Boss Garage where you're always seeing and learning something new. And I try to keep that true for you.